these are the images of atlantic city the public sees most often the casinos, the glitter, the glitz, all fueled by lots of money. narrator still there are people suffering here, especially in this bad economy many come to the atlantic city rescue mission for assistance and find public school students offering a helping hand students from pinelands regional junior high and pinelands regional high schools don't come to the mission empty-handed they bring clothing, handmade blankets, and food. My mom, me and my mom, we made crumb cake. And we just brought that since bring something for a change, something different. Kathleen and her classmates serve dinner to soup kitchen clients. What I get out of doing is um, I get experience and I get to see, like put myself in other people's shoes and see how, like, we are together like we are. All these people here tonight are one big family. Yeah, a lot of love went into that. Students need to get out into the community. They have to learn empathy. They have to be able to walk in other people's shoes. And I believe by taking students out of the classroom and going into the community into all these different settings, it breaks down barriers. And coming to the soup kitchen, not only are they coming here to take care of other human beings, they're also helping themselves. It's heartbreaking to know how many people, like when I first came here, like I couldn't believe how many people there were that were, that did not have food and clothing and I, it just broke my heart just knowing how many people there were. 3,300 people were helped at the mission last year. Services included psychiatric, medical and housing placement. More than 300 homeless people, including children, sleep in the mission shelter at night. We've seen such a, a huge increase in, in our population because of what's happened in the economy. I mean, we've received thousands of calls this year from Americans of the middle income bracket. Yeah, I was very surprised. Like, I didn't know that there was going to be that many people. I was just like helping out people. I honestly would rather be here more than hang out with friends. Were you on the Vietnam War? Yes, I was. Thank you for serving. I appreciate that. They basically tell us don't end up like them. Some of them, they all don't use drugs, don't drop out of high school. And you basically have to listen to it so you'll make your life be better. Do you want to know? Are you? I think it's amazing. I mean, it teaches them our humility, you know, to show them what it's, um, what it's like to be on, on the receiving end. I think it's a, it's a good outlook for them, especially when, as, as young as they are, they're starting their work, work ethics, uh, starting off brand new, and, uh, you know, that, that gives them an outlook for later on in life. You know, it gives them a good um, a process. Sometimes their families have kind of felt this way, you know, have been in this position. So I want them to know that they're here to help them and there's also a way out. I hope that they're taken away, that they can continue to have a kind heart and relate to people. I love to talk to students because I, I can help them understand and help them process the notion that when they're considering career choices and the career track that they might want to pursue might be nursing it might be accounting, it might be information technology. And so to help them understand and see how those careers fit into an organization like this. 506 people performed 18,000 hours of volunteer service at the mission last year. 20 to 25% of them were young people. Well, from helping people I've learned that if you help people that maybe they will help, they get inspired and they'll help someone else. Kind of like paying it forward.